I attended the Duplain Church of Christ ever since I was a young boy because my folks were long-standing members here. I wanted to share with you some things that I remember during the first 14 years of my life about the old Duplain Church of Christ building here, which was across the road. Um, the sounds of the building, the squeaks, the creaks of the old wooden steps of the stairs and the floors, and the way it looked with its big stained glass windows and the high steeple with the old bell in it, and the old bell we still have out in the bell tower. It's like the first house you ever lived in. You don't forget what it looks like. Many of the things arranged in this new building were similar to the old way they were set up. So keep that in mind as we do a walkthrough. When you would enter the, build, the church building, you would come into a small room and it was, I will call it the entryway. And off to the right was a door with a classroom and to the left was a door that led down the stairs, L-shaped stairs, going to the basement, where there was classrooms made by dividers and a kitchen with a sink. It was there in one of those classrooms that Arlene Holden told us as children that if we were in need and asked God for help, he would give it to us. This was true for me as in I did just that. I asked for help when I was in pain and God answered me right then and that's where I first believed in God because he made himself real to me when I needed him. Back to the tour. If you come in through the, the front entrance and straight through the small entryway, you would go into the sanctuary where there was a closet and the stairs are in the back of the sanctuary which led to the balcony. The church had big stained glass windows on both sides of the sanctuary and one of them is in the west wall of the new church building now. The sanctuary was full of wood pews and in front were two chairs on each side of the small communion table. During communion, there would be an elder on the right side of the table and a deacon on the left side sitting in a pew-like chairs. They would both stand and the elder would give the communion meditation, thought from the scripture, and then the deacon would pray. Trays were passed as they are today with the bread and the juice. The elders were men that took this very serious and as a child, they looked very old and stern. Remember, I was a young child. The pulpit was a step or two up from the main floor, and the baptistry was right behind that, and with a piano on the left side and an organ on the right. The organ was played for all the worship songs, and we used hymnals as our songbooks. Ralph Woodard was the preacher that I remembered the most. He lived across the street, in the parsonage that the church owned. Ralph and Doris came from their log cabin at Rock Lake to live in the colony. I remember helping him mow his grass with his green lawn boy push mower. I also remember helping him plant the two pine trees in his front yard as seedlings, and they're still there today. I remember helping at times mowing the churchyard. It seemed so huge, we mowed it with push mowers. We had yearly revival meetings here at Duplain, which lasted a week long with services each evening at the church. The visiting preaching minister would visit members' houses for his meals every day, which made it more personal for everyone. On March 25, 1962, I was baptized at Duplain Church of Christ at one of those summer revival meetings. I was eight years old, and Brantley Doty was the minister from Great Lakes Bible College, and he was preaching that week at our revival meeting. For a child, it was either very interesting or very boring trying to sit through and be quiet while grown-ups are worshiping and hearing messages from God's Word every night for a week. For the first 14 years of my life, I noticed and learned many things in that old building, and many I still hold dear to my heart. But the greatest thing is said in a song that we used to sing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so.